welcome you to Sugar Grove United Methodist Church. I hope that you know that wherever you've been on your spiritual journey, whatever your faith background might be, you're welcome, and we are truly glad to worship together this morning, those who are joining us in the sanctuary and those of you who are joining us from home this morning. I have a few announcements to share with you this morning. Uh, we have some birthdays that we're celebrating this week. Uh, Kevin Clayson, <coughs> Mike Howie is celebrating a birthday. Uh, Paul Heckert, Jordan Moses is turning five today. Uh, Diana Baker and Adley Flanders. And Mike, I think your birthday was probably in the last week, but we carried you over since we didn't have in-person worship. So we're going to sing happy birthday to you and just keep that birthday celebration going. <laughs> decorations uh, just so that we can uh, do that together. Many hands make light work. Unfortunately, I apologize, I have to leave right away. <laughs> I got invited to a baby shower that actually starts at 11 o'clock. I said, who starts a baby shower at 11 o'clock on a Sunday and invites a pastor? But anyway, the girls and I are leaving right away, but Kim will be around and she's going to help make sure we find all the right boxes. So whatever you can get done today would be greatly appreciated. Uh, financial statements are available. I don't have a slide for that, but financial statements are available uh, from 2022 out in the fellowship area on the table under the TV. And then I just want to make sure that you see um, we have gotten back to our uh, God story. We're starting in the Gospel of Matthew. We'll be in the Gospel of Matthew through the uh, winter, spring season here at the beginning of 2023. And so each week you'll have an insert that you can take home that will tell you a little bit about the story and give you some reading options to follow along. Our mission of the month for January is Mutual Ground, and uh, Betsy Santana is here to share a little bit about the work that Mutual Ground does and to help inform us uh, as we think about how we might uh, collect an offering that can support the work that Mutual Ground is doing. So Betsy, I'll invite you to come and share with us. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, my name is Betsy Santana. I am the development, uh, marketing and development coordinator for Mutual Ground. Um, and thank you for having me here today. I am honored to speak to you today about Mutual Ground and kind of tell you a little bit about some of the work that we do. I like to start with just giving some of the statistics, which I'm sure you have all heard. With national statistics like one in three women and one in four men experiencing some form of physical violence by an intimate partner, or nearly 20 people per minute experiencing physical abuse in the United States, it's very likely that even if you don't know it, there is somebody that you know who is struggling in silence with domestic violence. Equally chilling, every 68 seconds an American in the United States is sexually assaulted, and although it can happen to anyone, one in six women are victimized or are becoming victims of an attempted or completed rape in the United States. In addition to that, 15% of adults in the United States struggle with a substance use disorder. This number equates to a little over 39 million individuals, with only 10% of those individuals seeking treatment or receiving treatment for that disorder. In many cases, individuals struggling with substance use disorder started using to help overcome trauma in their life, many times from sexual or domestic violence. So why am I here sharing these statistics? Because despite, we, despite widely held perception, domestic violence, sexual violence, and substance use disorders are prevalent across all socioeconomic groups, ethnic groups, 
and these issues can impact anyone in any community. These are sombering facts, and no fun to talk about, but it's, so, it's why it's so important that we are out into the community explaining the resources that we have for both individuals and families. At Mutual Brown, we work hard to provide prevention, intervention, and ongoing services for anyone who may need, need, need us because we don't want anyone to suffer in silence. At Mutual Ground, just to share some of the statistics that we as an organization provide out into our community, we're open 24 hours a day, seven days a week to provide domestic violence and sexual violence services to our community. Our prevention programs reach over 55,000 elementary, middle, and high school students every year. Educating them on topics relevant to them and giving them an avenue to receive help. Our staff and volunteers answer more than 4,500 hotline calls annually. We do have two 24-hour hotlines, one for domestic violence and one for sexual violence that are answered day and night, holidays, throughout the year. Our shelter has 28 beds and seven cribs, runs at about a 90% capacity year-round, providing safety to over 200 adults and children annually. Our advocates respond to 195 calls every year to local emergency rooms when a victim of domestic or sexual violence presents. When you break it down, it's essentially responding to a local emergency room every other day to provide comfort and, to, and support to somebody who's experienced domestic or sexual violence. Our legal advocates assist in filing and obtaining approximately 300 orders of protection per year for victims. And overall, we serve more than 1,500 individuals annually, over 500 of those being children. All these services are free of charge to anyone in our community. Now, with the addition of our substance use department, we also provide over 2,500 hours of service to support individuals impacted by substance use disorders. Thankfully, with all these sombering facts, we do see many success stories, and I do have two to share with you today. The first comes from someone in our substance use disorder program who shared, what I'm dealing with is a lifelong disease, and it feels great to know that I have a place like Mutual Brown that doesn't make me feel like I have an expiration date. But even, but they are here to help me through all my ups and downs. This is a comfort that I can't even explain in knowing that I'm not alone. Our second story came from a donation that we actually received last week. Um, the individual made a donation and in her donation she included this letter. About three and a half years ago, Mutual Brown presented a program at our goddaughter's grade school. The presentation was on sexual exploitation and abuse. Our granddaughter, then nine years old, came home from school that day and told her mother what was talked about in the Mutual Brown presentation and that it was happening to her. Her parents took immediate action. To make matters worse, the person involved was a trusted, very close family friend. It seemed like an eternity before trial dates were scheduled. COVID-19 kept rearing its head, causing postponements of the process, often at the last minute. The individual has now been convicted of predatory sexual assault of a victim under 13 years old, a class X felony, among other convictions. As more and more information came out about what the child and family were going through, both friends and strangers alike have come forward with their personal stories, some naming the same person. Thank you, Mutual Ground, for your continued advocacy and help. So again, I thank you for having me here today. It's very important for us to be out in the community sharing these stories and this information with our community. And I can't tell you how much I appreciate the opportunity to speak to you today and share this important information and how Mutual Ground is making a difference in our community. I invite you to join us in these efforts and I want to rest, leave kind of rest assurance as I was speaking to somebody earlier today, 100% of the donations that Mutual Brown receives go directly to our services. There's no overhead cost that's being taken out of, so every dollar that's donated helps impact the life of a child or an adult or family struggling with substance use, domestic violence, and or sexual violence. So thank you for having me here today. Thank you, Betsy. Uh, Mutual Ground will be our mission of the month throughout 
The month of January, we'll have opportunities to uh, support the work that they're doing. I'm gonna pass our mission buckets in just a moment, and if you'd like to make a contribution specifically to Mutual Ground, uh, do you wanna come and get those for me? If you'd like to make a, a gift to Mutual Ground, you can do that today, but again, this will be our mission throughout the month of January, and we'll have an opportunity um, to continue to support the work that they're doing. Hannah, you can do the other side. There you go. Thank you. All right. We're going to make a transition from gathering to, for worship to being in worship, and so I invite you, as you're able, to stand and join me in our call to worship. Today we celebrate a special baptism, the baptism of Jesus of Nazareth. God says, look, see my chosen servant, the one in whom I utterly delight. I have placed my spirit on him. He will bring true justice to the nations. When Jesus was baptized, the heavens opened up and the spirit came down like a dove. And there was a voice from heaven saying, This is my dearly loved Son, with whom I am delighted. The joy of the Lord be with you all. And also with you. Let us join together in our opening prayer. Most wonderful God, foolish and flawed though we are, we too delight in your beloved Son. As in his name we gather in the house of many praises, may the heavens be open for us, that we may catch a glimpse of that light and love that transforms our common days with a beauty not of our making. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We'll remain standing and join in singing our opening hymn, Baptized in Water. It's number 2248 in the faith we sing, the small black hymnal. <laughs>
of ways that these star boards can help us to remember that God is with us on a journey and that these stars kind of lead us like the star led the wise men. Oh, I need to pick one? Okay. Oh, mine is courage. Oh. No, 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 no. All right. So, no, it's, that's okay. All right, so this word is your word all year, okay? So you're going to find some place to put this at home, maybe next to your bed, because it'll glow at night, and you'll still be able to remember it. And we're going to pass this basket around, and you each get to choose a star word also, a word that can lead you and guide you. And I have a star that I thought maybe you could try and write a word on here when you get your children's ministry folder, if you haven't already gotten it. It says star, S-T-A-R, to help you know how to spell star. So, will you pray with me, and then you guys can work on these, and we'll get these passed out to everyone else. I'll invite you to repeat after me as we pray. Will you repeat after me? Dear God, Dear God thank you for the star and the wise men who followed it. Thank you for giving us the best gift, Thank you for giving us the best gift. Jesus Christ. Thank you for these star words that help us remember that you are with us always. Help us to follow you every day. Amen. All right, again, if you have not already gotten your folder, you can go get your folder so you have a pencil and some crayons and you can color in your star word. Here you go. Okay, here. We're going to join together in singing. Uh, while the meeting seated, I have decided to follow Jesus. And the kids return to their seats. Haley, would you take this and start with Grandma on this side? And everybody take a star word, and when it gets to the back, Mark, will you pass it on this side, and then we'll bring it forward. But we're going to sing just verse 1 of I Have Decided to Follow Jesus. We'll sing it through two times. verses 1 through 17, and can be found on page 2 in your pew Bibles. In those days, John the Baptist appeared in the desert of Judea, announcing, Change your hearts and lives. Here comes the kingdom of heaven. He was the one of whom Isaiah the prophet spoke when he said, The voice of one shouting in the wilderness, Prepare the way for the Lord. Make his path straight. John wore clothes made of camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist. He ate locusts and wild honey. People from Jerusalem throughout Judea and all around the Jordan River came to him. As they confessed their sins, he baptized them in the Jordan River. 
Many Pharisees and Sadducees came to be baptized by John. He said to them, You children of snakes, who warned you to escape from the angry judgment that is coming soon? Produce fruit that shows you have changed your hearts and lives. And don't even think about saying to yourselves, Abraham is our father. I tell you that God is able to raise up Abraham's children from these stones. The axe is already at the root of the trees. Therefore, every tree that doesn't produce good fruit will be chopped down and tossed into the fire. I baptize with water those of you who have changed your hearts and lives. The one who is coming after me is stronger than I am. I am not worthy to carry his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. The shovel he uses to sift the wheat from the husks is in his hands. He will clean out his threshing area and bring the wheat into his barn. He will burn the husks with a fire that can't be put out. At that time, Jesus came from Galilee to the Jordan River so that John would baptize him. John tried to stop him and said, I need to be baptized by you, yet you come to me? Jesus answered, Allow me to be baptized now. This is necessary to fulfill all righteousness. So John agreed to baptize Jesus. When Jesus was baptized, he immediately came up out of the water. Heaven was open to him, and he saw the Spirit of God coming down like a dove and resting on him. A voice from heaven said, This is my Son, whom I dearly love. I find happiness in him. This is the word of God for the people of God. Praise Will you pray with me? Gracious and loving God, we give you thanks for this day and for this opportunity to be gathered together as your children, as your church, to hear your word read, sung, and proclaimed. Open our hearts and our minds and our ears this morning, O oh God, that we might each hear the message that you have for us this day. For you alone, O oh Lord, are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Just two weeks ago, we were celebrating the birth of a baby who was the gift of God's love to all the world. And now, this morning, we fast forward 30 years into his life as we hear the story of Jesus' baptism. I'd like to begin with an excerpt from Adam Hamilton's book, The Way, Walking in the Footsteps of Jesus. Adam Hamilton is the lead pastor of Resurrection United Methodist Church in Leewood, Kansas. In this passage from The Way, Adam paints a different picture for us of John and Jesus and their encounter in the Jordan. Hear these words from Adam Hamilton. One day, as John was baptizing in the Jordan, he looked up to see a familiar face. He smiled as Jesus approached and the two men embraced. These men had known one another their entire lives. They had played together as boys and dreamed together as young men. John was six months older, but he always knew it was his younger cousin who would play the greater role in God's plans. The two had shared long walks and conversations, both in Jerusalem and in the monastery by the Salt Sea. They had stayed up long into the night discussing the scriptures and the kingdom of God. John's preaching and baptism at the Jordan would officially set in motion a chain of events that would lead to John's own death in a matter of months and to Jesus' crucifixion just three years later. Jesus took off his sandals and robe and said to John, Baptize me, brother. John stepped back, confused, protesting. I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? Jesus insisted, let it be so now, for it is proper for us to, this way to fulfill all righteousness. 
And um, Hamilton takes some liberties here with the story filling in pieces that don't necessarily appear in scripture, helping us to understand maybe uh, the more intimate relationship that Jesus and John would have shared. They were cousins, after all, and I think it's safe for us to assume that their paths would have crossed from time to time and even would have been raised together in parts of their lives. Perhaps they played games together at family celebrations, as cousins do, or went on walks to discover new things. And I think it's pretty certain, given how John and Jesus both develop into the people that God has created them to be, that they had some conversation about who God was and about scripture that they were both familiar with. Jesus' baptism was the event that kicked off his three-year public ministry. It was both exciting and terrifying. Jesus' ministry publicly began when he was 30 years old, as he waded into the waters of the Jordan to be baptized by his older cousin. As we hear again this story of Jesus' baptism, it's important for us to pause for a moment and think about what baptism means for each of us today. Baptism has a variety of different meanings in our world. For some, it is the cleansing of sins, washing away the wrongs in life. For some, it is a new birth, a fresh start. For some, it's a welcoming into God's family. For some, it's a public recognition of the work that God is doing. For some, it's a right or a custom that simply must happen, with no other real thought or reason put behind it. And so I thought it might be helpful to share what the United Methodist Church says in our book of worship about baptism. I'll share two different things that stand out as significant to me. The first is this. Baptism is an act that looks back with gratitude on what God's grace has already accomplished. It is here and now an act of God's grace, and it looks forward to what God's grace will accomplish in the future. This one statement covers so much of what baptism is in the United Methodist Church. And it clearly states our beliefs about God's grace being offered to everyone, even those who don't know or accept it. But it also looks ahead to say God's work is not done in the person who is being baptized. This is why we as a church baptize people of all ages, infants and children, youth and adults. Infants and children who are brought forth for baptism by their parents are loved by God, and there is much to celebrate about what God will continue to do in their lives. Youth and adults who choose themselves come for baptism, and they might be seeking a, a cleansing or a forgiving of sins for their past actions. For us as United Methodists, baptism recognizes and celebrates that God has been with us on the journey of life, before, during, and after the moment of baptism. Whatever mistakes or bad decisions have been made, God is with us, and God loves us. And God rejoices with the church as we see how God will continue to work in the lives of those who come for baptism. The second piece of what baptism means for United Methodists that I want to share is this. What happens to that member of the body of Christ will make a difference to every other member of the body. And the rest of the church can never again be the same. By the sacrament of baptism, the church pledges to that member, saying, your joy, your pain, your gain, your loss, are ours, for you are one of us. This is church. This is why we are here, 
This is why we should want to invite others to be a part of who we are as the church. The pandemic increased feelings of loneliness by isolating people even more than they had previously been. And while society has slowly returned to normal in day-to-day -day functions, loneliness in our country and really around the world remains at an all-time high. There are countless studies that can be accessed online, I read several of them this week, that say anywhere from 37 to 60 percent of Americans describe themselves as lonely, either frequently or almost all of the time. 37 to 60 percent of Americans are seriously lonely. I shared with the children this morning that Jesus is the greatest gift that God has given us, and the, the Magi followed the star and brought Jesus gifts in return. Jesus is the greatest gift given to the world, not just to those of us in this room or those who are gathering in their homes to be in worship with us this morning. God's love through Jesus is a gift for everyone. Jesus is how we know God's love. God's love is the gift that brings us together. And God's love is meant to be shared. So as we celebrate and remember Jesus' baptism, and we're reminded of God's words, right, as Jesus comes out of the water when the Holy Spirit spoke and the words were, You are my beloved. With you, I am well pleased, or in you, I find happiness. Jesus was God's beloved. We are God's beloved also. The Greek word used here is agapetos. It's an adjective that's a term of endearment, signifying a special or deep bond, a favorite one who is treasured and dear. The word indicates taking particular delight or pleasure in someone or something. Friends, God delights in you. God delights in me. God delights in us. And so while we should be lifted up and encouraged as we are reminded that God delights in each and every one of us, we also need to use those words as inspiration, to be inspired to share the gift of God's love and not hoard it for ourselves. There is more than enough to go around. So how might we invite others to know that they, are God's beloved? How might we include more people in the life of this church? A church that lives out our baptismal vows, the vows that say your joy, your pain, your gain, your losses are ours, for you are one of us. How do we help people to know that God delights in them? Friends, my hope is that the start of this new year would be a time of renewal and rest and a remembering that we are God's beloved. But it's also my prayer that we hear the challenge to be invitational, to invite people to be a part of this community, because the joy and the fellowship that we experience, that we share with one another in this place, isn't limited to only a chosen few. God is already loving those people who are outside of this gathered space. But maybe they need a reminder, or maybe they need an invitation, or maybe they need to be told that God delights in them as God delights in us. So it's our job. That's what we are called to do, to follow the star as the wise men did, to live out our baptismal vows, to invite others to join us 
so that they might know and experience God's love in the joy and fellowship of this community right alongside us. So may we, like the wise men, take up the task of following the star, following where God calls us, sharing our gifts, and inviting others to be a part of our community. May we follow where God leads, today and tomorrow. We have an opportunity to remember our baptism. And so I would invite you, either by following along on the insert in your bulletin, uh, or by following along on the screen as we participate in this remembrance of baptism. One of the things that I, I didn't say, um, but probably should have, is that as United Methodists, we believe in one baptism. Once you are baptized, you are baptized. God is present and working in your life before, during, and after that moment. So there's no need to be rebaptized. But it is important to remember our baptism. Not physically remember the moment that you were baptized. For some of us, that's impossible if you were baptized as infants. But to remember what that call is. How God is working in our lives. So sisters and brothers in Christ, through the sacrament of baptism, God's Spirit has been poured out upon water. Water poured over and immersing us. Water that flows freely for all who will receive it. Waters from the streams of God's saving power and justice. Water that brings hope to all who thirst for righteousness. Water that refreshes life, nurtures growth, and offers new birth. So today, we come to the waters to renew our commitments in each other's presence to Christ who has raised us, the Spirit who has birthed us, and the Creator who is making all things new, to continue to live out that covenant of whatever you are experiencing, I experience alongside you. So let us renew our covenant. So I ask you, will you turn away from the powers of sin and death? Will we renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of our sins? Will you let the Spirit use you as prophets to the powers that be? We accept the freedom and power God gives us to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves. Will you proclaim the good news and live as disciples of Jesus Christ, his body on earth? We confess Jesus Christ as our Savior, put our whole trust in his grace, and promise to serve him as our Lord, in union with the Church which Christ has opened, to people of all ages, nations, and races. Will you be living witnesses to the gospel, individually and together, wherever you are and in all that you do? We will remain faithful members of Christ's holy church and serve as Christ's representatives in the world. Will you receive and profess the Christian faith? We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God, who has created and is creating, who has come in Jesus, the Word made flesh, to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the Spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to live with respect in creation, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus, crucified and risen, our judge and our hope, in life and death, in life beyond death. God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Would you please join with me in the prayer of thanksgiving over water? 
The Spirit of the Lord is with us. Let us pray. Almighty God, the life you birthed in us by baptism into Jesus Christ will never die. Your justice never fails. Your mercy is everlasting. Your healings are closed. Your spirit flows over the world. We cannot stop it, God. But sometimes we try. We try to block the flow, we redirect the winds of the spirit, or we walk so far away from the life-giving stream that we do not hear its sound, and we forget its power. We parch ourselves. We are dry and thirsty, O God. Come, refresh us. Come upon us, Holy Spirit. Come upon us, Holy Spirit. Come upon these waters. Come upon these waters. Let these waters be to us drops of your mercy. Let these waters remind us of your righteousness and justice. Let these waters renew in us the resurrection power of Jesus. Let these waters take us on your coming reign. Most holy God, Abba, Father, glory to you. Jesus Christ, Savior, Lord, glory to you. Spirit of fire, spirit over the waters, spirit of holiness. Glory to you. Eternal God, one in three and three in one, all glory is yours now and forever. Amen. I'm going to invite you to come forward and touch the waters of baptism in a few moments when we come forward for communion. So as you come for communion this morning, you'll stop and touch the waters of baptism. And as you, you do that, uh, you're invited to touch the waters and touch it to your forehead or perhaps just feel the cool wetness in your hands and to remember that you are baptized and rejoice. And if you are not yet baptized, you are not excluded from this. You're still welcome to come and touch the waters and think of it as an invitation about what it might mean for you if you were to be baptized, and how God already loves you, and how God will continue to work in your life. One of the ways that we live out our baptismal vows is to pray for one another as we think about one another's joys and concerns, and we carry those as our own. And so we have a few moments to share together our joys and concerns. You'll see on the back of the bulletin uh, that we continue to pray for Lisa and for Landon, for Christine and Rich. Are there other joys or concerns that you would share this morning? Yes, Greg. Um, I, I have a little in the hospital right now. Brain infection, mm -hmm. and so we're trying to find the next one. Your friend's first name? Bruce. Bruce. All right. So Bruce's friend from high school is that what I heard you say? Yes. Uh, has a brain infection, and they're trying to sort that out. So we'll be praying for Bruce. Thank you. Anyone else? Those of you who are joining us from home, I'd invite you to share any concerns or joys that you have with one another in the, the comment section. Let us pray. Sisters and brothers, our baptismal vows call us to compassion and mercy on behalf of those in need. And so this morning, we offer our prayers for the church and the world, for the lost and the lonely, for those who are hurting and those who are seeking. Lord God, you revealed your Son in the waters of the Jordan and anointed him with the power of the Holy Spirit to proclaim good news to all people. Sanctify us by the same Spirit, that we may proclaim the healing power of the gospel by acts of love in your name. Amen. Thank you all for joining us in worship this morning here in the sanctuary and from your homes. And thank you for the ways that you continue to support the life and ministries 
of our congregation. As I said earlier, the 2022 giving statements are available in the fellowship hall on the table under the TV. Uh, those will be available to be picked up through the end of January, and then after that we'll mail what's remaining. So make sure that you pick yours up. Friends, offering is an opportunity, not an obligation. It's just one of the ways that we are invited to respond to how we see God at work in our own lives and in the world. And so I'd invite you as you're able to give with generous hearts that we might continue to be Christ's hands and feet in the world here in Sugar Grove, but also around the world by reach of the United Methodist Church. In addition to the offering plates that will be passed this morning, we have ways to give online. You can visit our church website. You can mail a check to the church office, whatever is easiest for you. As we receive our offering this morning, Sheldon has an offering for us. Thank you. 
please join with me in our prayer of dedication. Generous God, we ask you to bless the gifts we give this morning. We ask that you help grow the trust in us, that we might follow without looking back, and that we might leave behind more of our old lives to experience more deeply new life in you. In the name of Christ, who goes before us and beside us, we pray. Amen. You may be seated, and I invite, if you'd like to follow along in your hymnals, uh, that you may turn and join on page 13. Uh, the words will also be on the screen this morning. All are invited to God's table. All are welcome to participate in the fullness of God's abundant, healing, reconciling meal. You do not need to be a member of this church or any church for that matter. All who desire to grow in their relationship with God are invited to come. For those of you who are worshiping with us from home, please use this as an invitation to contact the church office uh, and uh, find a time where you can come to the church or I can come to your home and bring communion to you. In order to fully prepare our hearts to receive all that God is offering, let us confess our sins before God and one another. Great God of presence and promise coming. Alright, let's go with that one. Just turn this one that way we're all praying the same prayer. Loving God, we confess we have not always heeded your prophet's voices. We admit we have not acknowledged John the Baptizer, who proclaimed the baptism repentance for the forgiveness of sins. We acknowledge in our failure to do so, we miss John's all too important declaration about the greater one who was coming. God, today we gather, needing grace and the gift of forgiveness, granted through your Son. Of his suffering, 
death and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, Jesus took the bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, Jesus took the cup, again gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and fruit of the vine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world, the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in his final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. And now with the confidence of the children of God, let us join our voices praying the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Morning, you'll be invited to come forward by the center aisle. Remember to touch the water and to remember your baptism. Uh, remember your baptism and rejoice. And then you'll receive a piece of bread and a cup. You're welcome to stop here and partake of the elements uh, and put the cups in the little baskets, or you can go back to your seats by the side aisle and uh, take your communion there. If you need gluten free for any reason, please uh, just let me know. Uh, Kim, would you help serve? And please, um, Rick, would you help serve this morning? God speaks to us in the silence, God speaks to us in the noise, and God speaks to us in this meal. Listen and come. For the table is prepared for all of us. <laughs>
Eternal God, we give thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Raise us to new life in this sacrament. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. I invite you to stand as you're able for our closing hymn when Jesus came to Jordan in number 252 in our hymnals.